Hello once again, and welcome to Friendship Moments with Friendship Baptist Church. Thank you for coming to join me today. Let's start with a word of prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be able to share your word. We pray, Lord, for those that are listening, that you will have, they will have hearing ears and understanding hearts to receive. I pray, Lord, that my words will not get in the way, but that your words will come forth as you've given them to me, Lord. So help us all to understand your word, to learn to trust you, and to give you praise and glory and honor, because, Lord, without you, none of us would be here. You're an awesome God, a wonderful Father, and a precious Savior, and we thank you for being who you are. In Christ's name, amen. The question seems to be very prominent today. Isn't the Bible just another religious book? because there's so many religious books out there now, and there are so many so-called Bible translations, and some people are changing the Bible in order to make them fit their beliefs. So we have to be very careful. So we're going to go back to some of the old translations, the King James, the NIV, um, the NASB, <coughs> some translations that have been taken from the older texts that are available to us. How we view the Bible is vital to understanding who we are and how we live our lives and where we will spend eternity. If we believe that the Bible is truly God's Word, then we can trust what He's saying to us. So, how can we know the Bible is truly God's Word? There is no other book like the Bible. It contains 66 separate books written by over 40 different writers. The writers came from all walks of life, shepherds, kings, priests, scholars, fishermen, prophets, religious leaders, and was written over a span of 1,500 years. And by the way, there's a lot of people that are religious God is a relationship. Yet the message is unified and cohesive all the way through. From the first book to the last, it progressively reveals God the Father, His Son Jesus, and His Holy Spirit to those who will seek Him. In order to make certain it stayed accurate throughout the centuries, scribes had to follow exacting rules they counted the letters in a line and on a page. If they made an error, the page was destroyed, and they had to begin all over. Other scribes checked the copies against the originals. If there was a mistake, they rewrote it and went through the whole process again. There are more copies closer to the time of the original writers of the Bible than those of writers of secular literature written hundreds of years later. Plato, Socrates, Herodotus, Josephus, these are considered great historians and philosophers, yet there is less to prove they wrote the books that carry their names than that God breathed the Bible. The Bible contains hundreds of fulfilled prophecies, some written hundreds and thousands of years before the events occurred. No other so-called religious book has done so. In the Bible, the proof of a prophet God truly speaks for, uh, who truly speaks for God, comes from the prophecy that he gives coming about exactly as he prophesied it. If not, he was to be killed. That's tough. Today, we have people calling themselves prophets, and their prophecies don't often come true. But they say that's okay. Times have changed. I haven't found that in all my searching in the Bible. Only God could tell the writers what to write. Because only God is in eternity and sees the beginning and the end of creation and all that is in between. Isaiah 46, 9 to 10 tells us to remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, things not yet come. 
Today we are seeing the rapid fulfillment of prophecy and the increase of events the Bible told us to watch for closer and closer to the end of days. The Bible, unlike other books, shows its heroes with all their flaws. Adam ate from the tree God told him not to eat from. Noah got drunk. Abraham lied about Sarah being his wife twice and put her in king's harems both times. She was, <clears throat> was taken into the king's harem, but God stopped the king from messing with her. Peter was always putting his foot in his mouth, and Paul had Christians tortured and killed. Now, let's see what the Bible says about itself, remembering God's Holy Spirit is directing. Deuteronomy 31, 24-26, When Moses finished writing the words of this law in a book until they were complete, he commanded the Levites who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, saying, Take this book of the law and place it beside the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God. Jeremiah 30, verse 2 says, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, write all the words which I have spoken to you and put them in a book. Habakkuk 2.2 2 says, Then the Lord answered me and said, Record the vision and inscribe it on tablets. <clears throat> Acts 1.16 Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. 1 Corinthians 2, 12 to 13 informs us, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given us by God. And we impart this in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is inspired, that means literally breathed, by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness. <clears throat> 2 Peter 1.20-21, knowing this first of all, that no prophecy of scripture comes from someone's own interpretation, for no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man. But men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> I want to insert right here. Prophecy is not necessarily for telling the future. Prophecy almost also means providing the word of God to others. So we take the word of God from the written word now instead of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit will speak to people, but we go by the written word to prove it. In 1, 1 to 3, one of my favorites, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show to his bondservants the things which must soon take place. And he sent and communicated it by his angel to his bondservant, John, who testified to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ, even to all that he saw. Now, the next promise you won't find in any of the other so-called religious books. Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and heed the things which are written in it, for the time is near and it draws closer every day. So you see, the Bible, God's Word, is a truly unique book. He is the only God that wants people to know him and willingly reveals himself because he longs for a relationship with his loved ones. I pray that you will pray for understanding and revelation of him through his precious word. Blessings.